Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be talking, or we will be talking about the potential chances of seeing a White Christmas updated. Uh, disclaimer to make at the beginning of this video, I will not be including a map <clears throat> at this beginning or at the end of this video or, you know, showing the chances of this White Christmas. It's just a discussion basically talking about who might see a White Christmas, who has the best chances, and I'll explain why I think so. Uh, before we get into this, though, consider uh, supporting my channel using Patreon. Fucking, uh, this Patreon is the best thing you could do probably to my channel. You just click on become a Patreon and you need to sign up. Um, again, this is completely optional, guys. This is just an extra thing if you're feeling very generous. Right now, I'm getting $4 per month, which is just amazing already. So thank you so much, guys. For those two Patreons, I've sent you a message saying my my thank you, so consider doing that. Also, if you want to support this channel, consider subscribing to it. That would help out a lot as well. So right now, we're, let's just go. Okay, so we're seeing a fairly, you know, active pattern. We're seeing some storms, but very warm, very warm. Not, not much cold air at all. So this is the 15th. Let's go to around Christmas time. <clears throat> And if we go to Christmas time, uh, the 2021st, we were seeing not much at all. We sh we're seeing some clippers, some snow across the northeast, a couple of major storms coming into the west. So the mountainous northwest uh, will be seeing quite a bit of snow. And that is basi basically at this point a given. We will be seeing warm temperatures in the northwest, but the mountains are cold enough. Even if it's above average, they will be seeing snow. And... Some of these storms will be, you know, transforming into uh, potential storms into the east coast and middle part of the country. You can see at this point, this is the, the 24th Christmas Eve. The 540 line is right way down here. Some channels have been talking about, you know, a potential Christmas, a blizzard. I, you know, I, I really doubt that. I, I mean, we could see a blizzard, but it's just so far out at this point. It's extremely, it's just la la land. It's wish casting. The models aren't, they've already changed since then. So you can see potentially a snowstorm along the East Coast around Christmas. We're seeing another event right here. So it seems like around Christmas time, we could be seeing a more active period, a more active uh, time frame. We could be seeing at some fairly big storms. And another thing I'd like to point out is if we go to the two meter temperature anomalies. So let's just go back to uh, before Christmas time. So let's just go to our 150 for now. And this is around the 18th. So kids my age, school is they're taking their finals, at least in high school. Everybody's preparing for this, you know, this Christmas it is way above average. Uh, in parts of the northwest, it could be almost 20 degrees above average. So remember at the beginning of the year how I said that the northwest will be above average in terms of temps? Well, yeah, that, that's basically, that's 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 going to stay true for much of the winter, I do think so. And especially January and February. In terms of snowfall, they may be seeing above average, but for those locations that are cold enough, even with it being above average, to see snow. But in the lower elevations, I just don't think it will happen anytime soon. And again, most of the country very warm. This is two days before Christmas. It is 90% of the country is above average. We go too far. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We go to about Christmas Day. This is Christmas Day, Tuesday. That's when it is this year. It starts breaking up the pattern. We start seeing some cold shots trying to make their way into southern United States or just the general United States, I should say. And... Uh, the warm air starts to get compressed to the south, but it's not that easily given up. You can see it's still hanging around around Christmas Day. And this is actually after Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, still warm across much of the country. But again, December 25th, 26th, around Christmas time is a fairly cold time of the year. So even if it's a couple of degrees above average in certain locations, doesn't mean that it's not cold enough for snow. So if we, uh, I, I wanted to look at the total snowfall accumulations. But this only goes out to 240 hours, which is December 22nd. So I do think the Northeast, fairly good chance of seeing a white Christmas, especially the higher elevations. Northern part of the country, that's an iffy, guys. Usually they see snow, but it doesn't seem like a lot of the country will be seeing a white Christmas this year. You know, at least com compared to average. And that is because if I were to show you the analog year, 2014, 2015 is very similar to this year in many, in many different aspects. And if we were to look back at it's December 2014, 2015, if anyone remembers, it was a warm December across all of the country. But then January and February and March came along, the second part of winter, and and 
it was a very, very cold. There was very cold shots of air coming into the country. So again, <clears throat> just because you won't see a white Christmas this year does not mean that <clears throat> winter will be, you know, will be complete. You know, I don't know how to describe a complete flop. That's what I would say. I think there will still be plenty of snow and plenty of cold this year after December into January and February, which if you think about it, if there's anyone watching this my age, if you're a kid that still goes to school, even if you're a college kid, um, that's actually good news because if there was really cold air cr around Christmas time, we have those two weeks off, so we wouldn't get any snow days. But if we have uh, cold in January and February and there is cold and lots of snow, then we have more chances of seeing uh, you know, snow days and cold days off. So that's actually good news, but you can see British Columbia anyways. I just wanted to point this quickly out. Look at that, 79, 64. I think some amounts up there in the higher elevations are gonna see 200 inches of snow in the next 10 days, which is just ridiculous. So I'd like to show you something interesting now. I showed this in my last video. It's called the East Asia Rule. So what happens in East Asia around uh, you know, where, whenever it happens, six to, ten, six to 10 days later, it happens in the United States, the cold air or either a warm air. So let's go to two meter temperature anomalies and let's see what we could be looking at. So let's just go to our zero and start this from the beginning. So right now, East Asia is looking at some chillier conditions. This could be happening around the, if this is happening around the 12th, it could, this could be happening around Christmas day, um, Christmas time. We go through in time, it could warm back up. Uh, you can see East Asia is warming up. This is around the 17th, so they're showing Christmas later, a couple days after Christmas being fairly warm. We go in through time, we start seeing a very cold Arctic blast coming into countries like Mongolia and into parts of countries of Russia, like uh, into parts of <laughs> into parts of Russia, uh, like Siberia, could be seeing some very cold weather. But um, nothing really remarkable in terms of the East Asia world. It could be some warm, um, could be some warm, uh, could be some warm, could be some cold, but n nothing we could really look at. If I were to show you the teleconnections right now, we're looking at uh, the NAO being somewhere around, you know, not going positive, not going negative either. So this is kind of supporting that. The AO, which basically sh um, shows how easily the cold air will enter into the country, how easily, how you know, how easy will it be for it to enter into the country? The easier, the lower the AO is, the more negative it goes down. The easier time the cold air has going into the country, and around Christmas time. The AO goes negative, so that could be, you know, showing a potential Arctic outbreak after Christmas into January, and I strongly support that idea. I will be actually making a video very soon about the potential for a, uh, for, for you know, January and February to be why it will be colder than December and why there will be several Arctic outbreaks. So let's go to six to ten day outlook. This is December seventeenth through the twenty first. And this is before Christmas time, and you can see their confidence, the Climate Prediction Center's confidence in it being above average for certain parts of the country is just ridiculously high. 80% chance of it being above average, that doesn't happen too often, especially during the winter time. And look, every single part of the country is above average, excluding Florida, where it's going to be neutral. And precipitation probability below average for much of the east, but again, this area in the west, northwest, British Columbia, Canada, very, very above average, ridiculously above average. Some locations can be seeing their whole, will be seeing their whole yearly snowfall in just a couple of days. And that just goes to show you that this year may be a fairly big year for those mountains, which is good. We need to get the snow pack up and those to fill up those reservoirs for later on in the summer. Let's go to the 8 to 14 day outlook. This is extending from the 19th through the 25th, which is Christmas day and still above average, you know, but they're starting to cool off here in the Northwest around neutral, it says. So, you know, around average, but not as much confidence for being it being above average, but that's obvious because it's farther out. That still doesn't really show anything. It could be equally as warm. In terms of precip, much above average. So again, guys, just because it's above average in terms of temperatures doesn't mean it will be above below average in terms of snow, especially during the coldest time of the year. If it was above average, say in April, yes, that you know that that would mean that would be enough to put it over the thirty-two degree line, um, thirty-two degrees, and it would not be producing snow. But it's January, December, the average is 20 degrees in some areas. So even if it's 10 degrees above average, that makes it 30, still cold enough for snow. That's why I think around Christmas time, we could be looking at a fairly active pattern for some snow, some clippers. And going into the second half 
of the holiday season, you know, the two weeks or three weeks that people have off, some, you know, especially schools, into January, I think it could be, become very cold. We'll just need to see how this plays out. Let's quickly go to the CFS model. This is PivotalWeather.com. It is a very extremely long-range model. It goes out to 100 hours in advance. I typically don't like using this because it's usually just wish casting, but sometimes I, you know, it, I just like to show it just to sh see what it has, what pattern it has in store. So whatever I look at, I usually show to you guys. If not, then that's because I don't have time on the video. So right now it's doing a fairly good job showing the above average conditions all the way through the 25th, 26th, but around that time, you could see this is the 26th, one day after Christmas, potential Arctic outbreak, maybe, and we go on in further in time, you can see the warm conditions are not as warm as they used to be. So the cold air is definitely starting to uh, store up here in northern or southern Canada, n far northern portions of the country, of the U.S. And then towards the end of the forecasting period, it comes down into the U.S. And I think we could be looking at the rest of the winter looking like this, guys. Just Arctic outbreaks or, you know, moderately cold outbreaks of cold air into the United States. So this is something very interesting we will need to keep watching. In terms of Christmas, in terms of, you know, the snow, I think, let me draw this out, that the highest chances for a white Christmas are, let's do this in uh, color black because we are right now on orange and orange on orange won't look good. So I think these locations right in here, I think that they have a fairly, you know, almost 75% or a greater chance of seeing a white Christmas. Southeast this year, not looking good at all. I would exclude these parts, almost giving them a 10 to 15% chance, if not zero. Southwest, not good looking either. Northwest, higher elevations, I would say. I should actually erase this because, actually, no, I won't. I'll just keep this. So I think these locations... X, just a big X. I don't think they will be seeing much snow here. You know, check mark. I think they'll be seeing a white Christmas in these areas. The higher elevations, I do think so. And this location, you know, this region, I should say, is just a giant question mark. Um, we may be seeing some snow. We may be not for Christmas. We may be seeing a white Christmas. We may be not. So this is this is what I think will look like. Southwest not looking good either. The higher elevations in this area, maybe. So just keep that in mind. The higher elevations. Let's just draw like an H E and let's just do a check mark right next to that. Higher elevations. Yes, but in terms of lower elevations, I just it's I don't see it happening. But that doesn't mean again that winter will be a complete flop. I think quite a bit of snow will still be falling into January and February. So hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Again, consider supporting my Patreon. It's, it's, you know, makes me create better videos, it makes me, or helps me get a computer that actually is good, because this thing, what I'm using right now is, you know, garbage, it's, <laughs> it's not, it's really not that good, that's why the quality of these videos have gone down, but hopefully I will get be getting one soon, again, thank you guys so much for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next episode, see ya, bye.